Mark Zero, surely this is the moment, the very moment, unless always, are you serious? I cannot believe what I've just seen! Nice shot there onto always though, 3v3 for Oxygen. As they start oh, no. to stick this, there needs to be some plant denial! Yoga can just hold on, Sana has to deny it, he does! In the midst of a crossfire, gets one of the D's on a second! So let's talk about the current state of Rainbow Six Siege. What is going on? What has Ubisoft done wrong and is there a way to fix the game? Well I uh, may have a solution if you stick around until the end of the video, but to start off let's talk about what made Rainbow Six Siege so big and popular and why it managed to captivate so many people. Because to be digging its own grave it must have been at its height at a moment in time. Rainbow Six Siege first premiered at E3 2014 with that beautiful trailer with amazing visual fidelity that all of us have seen. Unfortunately at launch it didn't quite look like that, but you know what, a new game was born. We had just gotten the next big competitive game, a game that we would end up playing for years to come. And in fact, it was just that way. It gained a lot of popularity even just within the first year of its release, as you can see from the graph on screen. That shows us that within the first year, it grew to above 40,000 concurrent players. The spikes where there is A, B and C are where the game had a free weekend, and again, it just shows how popular it was. Hey, before I get into breaking things down, allow me to take a moment to ask you lovely people if you could subscribe to the channel and drop a like as it will help me continue making these videos. Anyway, enough of that, let's get back on topic. We would receive the first major update to the game in the form of a new season. Year one, season 1, Black Ice, a name that many of us who have played Siege will associate with the infamous skin that we all love. The new season brought two new operators and a new map, and this was the standard for each of these new seasons that would come out. With each new season, the new operators brought a new way to play the game, and you would have to save your renown up to buy the new operators and use their abilities. Back then, we would get operators that were actually good and had useful abilities, well, for the most part anyway. In that first year, Ubisoft was able to showcase what they had planned for the game. It was not just going to die in a few years, no, they had a vision to keep the game updated for a long time. So we're already moving up to year eight of Siege and we are so committed to this game, we're already looking at the next 10 years of Siege. And they sure did, the game is now almost 10 years old and we still see a healthy amount of active players, as well as a pro league which has remained active since the game's initial launch. Which is also quite popular as you would have seen in those clips in the intro. It is safe to say that if in any way you are interested in the shooter genre of games, you will have heard of Rainbow Six Siege due to its immense presence. In fact, right now as of the time of writing this video, according to Steam charts, the game had a 79,000 player peak in the last 24 hours, which is really good for a game which is almost 10 years old. So now, after what I've just said, you're probably wondering what is it that actually went wrong? Well, personally, I started playing the game in the Red Crow season on PS4 way back in late 2016, when I would capture every time I was MEP on the scoreboard and I would be shown as the middle player on the end screen. Ah, uh, times were so simple that it would get me excited back then when this happened. This is when the game had received a bun and echo as operators and a skyscraper map. The game was doing pretty well and it was a fun competitive game. However, I'm going to show you an image from back then and an image of the game now, and it's almost completely different, and this is even more evident if I show you clips from then versus now. You see, this is the main reason that Siege has had such a volatile player base. You would have the veteran players that were used to one thing and enjoyed it, then the next season drops and there would be so many changes to adopt to, and many of those changes were not even regarded highly by the player base. Then on the other side, you would have the new player who joined the game and they would have to learn everything there is before being able to get competent. Even if you had a background in FPS games, you would still have to spend at least a month of consistently playing the game to understand how to play it properly. However, I really like the way that Shroud put it. To try. Like, you will never play a game like this. From the beginning, the game was never played how Ubisoft intended it to be. You see, they wanted players to play like other Tom Clancy games, slow and tactical. However, players were quick to abandon that style of gameplay, realizing that playing smart but with good gun skills rather than slow and tactical worked much better. So because of this, Ubisoft changed the direction of the game. One of the major things that changed is that they realized that rather than making the maps more realistic, they now needed to make them more fair for both attack and defense and adopt a more competitive game design. They also chose to go from more grounded and realistic operator ability to more science fiction abilities, if you look at some of the more recent additions to the game. I mean, we went from operators who had a breaching launcher or a ballistic shield, to an operator who can summon a clone of themselves from their arms, and the female version of Tarzan to mention a few. However, putting aside the switch in direction which likely led to the game's success, let's start analysing the issues with trying to make the game more competitive, as well as making the game more new player friendly at the same time. We would experience this in the form of tweaks and changes that Ubisoft made. One of the first major changes that no one really asked for was the removal of night maps, 
which I do not want to drag out for too long since it's already been spoken about many times. However, this would be one of the many things that Ubisoft would remove from the game to make it more competitive and fair. However, it would take away part of the fun factor as well, and this would become a slight problem. They refined many mechanics too, looking to make it more fair and competitive, which, to be fair, there is nothing wrong with since after all, it is a competitive shooter. However, things such as the removal of the original quick peeking would only make players complain. Some would argue that that change was for the better, which is understandable, but then making operators slower because people are playing them more than others does the opposite of keeping the player base happy. Sledge and Jaeger are two victims of this crime. Sledge bumped down to a 1 speed and Jaeger a 2 speed, all because people were playing them slightly more than other operators. Or we can even look at how they removed the ACOG site from Jaeger and Bandit and later Ash, which players again were not happy about. But hey, at least Ash got hers back now. All these changes would make playing those operators no longer as fun. Right now, there is little reason to play Sledge anymore. He is slow and heavy, so he makes a lot of noise when moving around. They removed his SMG-11 and his frag grenade, and there are two other operators who can do his job much better, Buck and Ram. But why is it that they choose to nerf him so much? Well, it's mostly because of the player pick rate graph. For those of you who are not familiar, this graph shows us the percentage of all the operators' pick rates and their win rates. But it is important to note that this is only from ranked games in Emerald and above ranks. Now, you see, the issue with this is that they make these changes to the game based on data from the higher end of the player spectrum, which causes issues since it's not respective to the whole playbase and most of the changes they make, they say, are to help the new players, yet they go based off of data from the top end of the player spectrum. So now I'm sure you can see what I'm trying to get to at with this point. The changes they make end up not being beneficial to anyone in the playbase, since the top players now complain of an operator being nerfed and the new players don't understand why the few operators they have or can afford are so much worse than the rest. And now this leads me perfectly onto my next point, which is that the game is quite difficult for a new player to pick up, and I have first hand evidence of this. Whenever I have tried to get my friends to play Siege, their first question when we join the game is, oh, who should I pick? Usually, they would have one of the original Pathfinder operators, so I would tell them to go with someone who is simple to play, such as Ash, and then they would ask, so what do they do? And I would explain. See, the issue here is that I shouldn't be the one explaining everything, it should be more clear for new players. And you know what, I'll give props to Ubisoft since they have gone a long way to help the new players in the more recent seasons, such as adding a new refined training mode to help. But now, let me remind you that the game has 71 operators, which is a whole 61 more than when the game first came out. The problem for new players is that to become competent at the game, they will have to learn all the names, all the abilities, and all the ways to play each of these operators properly, or how to play against them, as well as all the callouts for all the maps. You can understand how for a new player this is probably overwhelming and can be a reason for them to go off and play something like Call of Duty. But you know what, this isn't even my main point for why I think that Siege has started to dig its own grave. The main issue that I think is the root cause for why players are starting to leave is the lack of content that we are receiving. I'm gonna put up the roadmap for year 3 and the roadmap for year 9 on screen for you to see. Now I'll give you a moment to count how many operators and how many maps we get for both of these years. So as I'm sure you have been able to count, there were an amazing 8 new operators, a really good event, 2 new maps, and a map rework for year 3. Now, looking at year 9, we get 2 new operators, no new maps, a likely black bid rework, and right now in season 2 Operation New Blood, we got a rework of the recruit, which they managed to fail spectacularly, which I'll get back to in a moment. As you can see, we've gone from getting a good amount of new content per year, to well, not much anymore. And this is becoming a problem, as Ubisoft is still expecting people to have hyper on the new seasons, when we don't even get much of what a new season used to offer just a few years ago, so obviously that's another thing that players are unhappy about. Yet another change which no one asked for was the overhauled rank 2.0, which changed the way you rank up. Before, it had the common system of making you do 10 placement matches and it would give you a rank and you go from there. Now, with rank 2.0, they decided to copy a page from Fortnite's book, and it makes you start in copper 5, which is the lowest rank, and you have to work your way up from there. Now I'm not sure about you, but for the majority of the Siege community, nobody really wanted this. And you know what's funnier, is the reason why Ubisoft wanted to change rank. I kid you not, this is their reason. And what was really important for us was to keep friends together. By having friends together, they can cooperate, they can play, they can feel natural together. We felt that that was the most important part of the rank playlist. Whatever your rank, with rank 2.0, you can play with your friends. And that's something that was not possible in the previous version of the playlist. Now, I get the point of feeling comfortable with your friends, but they seem to have forgotten that the casual modes exist exactly for that purpose. So no matter the skill, you can play with whoever you want. As a main reason to change the way that ranked works, this is not acceptable, especially when there has been so much backlash since it released. Anyway, going back to the problem with the current season, Recruit used to be that one operator that everybody had, everyone could play, and everyone loved. You 
used to see a whole squad of just recruits and that was so fun to play with. In one round one of the teams does it, then the next both do it, and now you have 10 recruits running around the map trying to kill each other. Then there would be the funny strats such as the 5 shield recruits or all shotgun recruits. Essentially the recruit was a fun operator who had no ability like other operators, but its true ability was to enable fun matches in Siege that usually you would not get with other operator lineups. So wanna have a guess at what Ubisoft decided to do? Well why not completely scrap that and rework the recruits so that they're more like the other operators. Give them a fixed loadout, give them a name, striker on attack and sentry on defense and let them have customizable cosmetics, which okay, sounds good, but now you can't even have more than one on the squad. So by trying to make the recruit better, they managed to remove the feature that made them accessible to anyone since they were easy to play, and now it forces new players to play one of the 5 attackers or defenders that they get, of which they may not know how to use the ability. Ubisoft could have made it so that you had access to all of the weapons of the respective side you are playing on, and let you have a minor ability such as an ammo bag or a healing item, but no, they decided to add little to no value to recruit. In fact, they nearly took value away from the recruit this season. You see, the problem with this is that Ubisoft managed to remove yet another fun element from the game, and if they continue to go down this path, many of the old players will leave the game, since they no longer like the direction the game is taken, and new players will be so overwhelmed by the information to take in that they don't feel like it's worth putting in the time to learn everything. And you see, that is what is going to cause a decrease in the player count. But looking at the Steam charts once again, we see that the game peaked its all-time high of 200,000 concurrent players in the first season of Year 9, Dead Leoman, back in March of this year. This was huge, since the game's player count had doubled from February to March, and it managed to sustain an average of over 90,000 players until April, which is quite good, but now, Season 2 has dropped very recently, and that huge spike in players did not happen again, likely because Ubisoft made a change to the game that no one asked for. So this leads me to what I think the solution for Ubisoft could be. The major reason for players being unhappy with the game is the lack of new content and Ubisoft making changes that no one asked for. All that they would have to do is to plan out the release of more content each season, even if this means getting rid of a new arcade mode, which I'm sure nobody would care about and would much rather get two new operators per season, again, and at least two maps per year. This might contradict with my point of making the game overwhelming for new players. However, they could implement a system that would teach the players the new information. For example, they could implement a new feature in the operator's how to play section, which has a more in-depth video on how to play the operator and how to play against that operator, possibly by partnering up with a major content creator of the game or one of the pros. They should also have a pop-up for new players that informs them that this information is available to them. This would ensure that new players are taught the fundamentals of the game and how to play as or against all the operators. Now, I'm not a game developer, but Ubisoft has shown that they were able to do this in previous years. And sure, it might be hard to come up with new operator ideas given how many different abilities there are, but Ubisoft is a massive game development studio which has a lot of skilled people, which I'm sure can brainstorm some great ideas. And you know what, even if they can't come up with any new ideas, there are a massive amount of concepts which the community has made which actually have some great ideas for operators which I'm not sure why Ubisoft have never really looked at as far as I'm aware of. Ubisoft also has to put more focus on actually improving the game and not just making money from it, and the introduction of the membership just felt like a slap across the face from them. In my opinion, it does not fit in well with Siege, and the battle pass was already enough, which has its own issues such as not rewarding you when you finish the battle pass with enough credits to buy the next season's one, which forces players into buying more credits. If they rewarded you with the amount of credits you needed for the next battle pass when completing it to tier 100, then it would give people a reason to stay on the game and keep grinding to maximise what they get from buying battle pass. This will probably increase the average player count across the whole season, as there would be fear of missing out on the opportunity of playing to get the next battle pass for free, rather than having to pay for it. And I'm not a psychologist, but you know what, if something is free, people are gonna want it. Clearly, Ubisoft is making some changes and going for a direction which is slowly killing off the playbase it has, and needs to find a solution before it ends up dying off. Even after all I've said, Siege remains one of my favourite games and I have a lot of memories playing it. This channel started to get popular thanks to this game a few years back, and I would hate to see it die off similar to Battlefield. I would like to see Siege soar to new heights, but Ubisoft has to make changes that the community wants and needs to listen to its community, since it's what keeps the game alive. No community equals dead game, and no more money from Siege, which I know for a fact Ubisoft does not want to happen. And well, this is the end of the video, and I hope you lovely people enjoyed it all the way to the end. Hopefully, I did not rant off too much for your liking. Do let me know in the comment section what issues you think Siege has and how Ubisoft can work on fixing them. I would really appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel, which you will not regret since you will get to see more content just like this on your favourite games. Have an amazing rest of your day.